So welcome back. In the previous episode I was showing you my IPAC 1940 and this is actually what I was aspiring to own back then. It's of course the HP IPAC 4700, uh, quite an interesting device and the most interesting bit of all regarding this um, pocket PC is that it was built by HTC. Pretty unknown piece of fact there. Uh, but anyway, let's get on to... Well, just talking about this thing, I guess. This is the premium device, the top of the range back then, the big daddy, the top dog, if you will. Um, and I was actually hoping to get it because for me, back in 2010 or 11, I believe, 2011, uh, I considered it to be the ultimate, um, well, the ultimate uh, pocket PC, if you will. I aspired to own one. Yeah, that, that didn't sound quite nice, but actually on the surface, I'm a mild-mannered individual, but actually I'm hoarding this stuff like crazy, so yeah, bear with me. So it had a 4-inch display, it had an all-metal body construction, actually this is titanium, uh, the whole chassis, the whole housing is made of titanium. It had a VGA resolution, finally, so it had a, a 640 by 480 uh, pixel resolution. A pretty big, powerful battery. Let me just open it. Uh, yeah, and I don't know if you can see this, it's got a, some sort of interesting opening mechanism. So first you have to unlock. There's a security latch there for the battery and then operate the second latch which uh, frees up the battery from inside. So it's a pretty slick and uh, well very interesting uh, design uh, uh, as well as the 1940 that uh, uh, preceded it in well in my collection. Um, it's very thin it has a nice weight feel to it, but not too much actually, so it's not cumbersome. And uh, yeah, well, uh, let me just show you the inside. So here you can see it actually has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connection. So this is pretty, this was pretty big back then, even for 2000. 10 or 11 because Android at least in my home country I mentioned this before wasn't a household name so uh, having wireless available to you yeah it was pretty big also it had a 624 megahertz processor I um, don't know why I'm stumbling here uh, <laughs> just one second there we go it had a 624 megahertz processor and well, pretty, it was pretty big on memory as well compared to other lesser PDAs at least, to other pocket PCs. Suffice to say that it was a pretty big deal back then and I still consider it to be quite the nice device. Uh, it was launched in 2004, it had 64 megabytes of RAM and 128 megabytes of ROM and uh, very interestingly, very interesting, it, it held two card slots, so you actually had an SD card slot and additionally a CF card slot, let me just show you here. I actually do own a CF card slot. Uh, a CF card. It's rather small, but it's my understanding that these are very, uh, very, very uh, well built, and I don't know. They they have great. Uh, they have. Um, they're sort of the professional. They were the professional option back then for cameras and what have you. Uh, I don't know if you can see inside this thing. It it has some pins. Let me just uh, try to move this lighting source so I don't know if you can see this 
actually but there the, there you go so you can see the pins actually hold the card in place so yeah it was pretty big back then um, nice construction to it whoa I don't want to 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 damage the pins inside so let me just try to insert this thing back correctly yeah there we go so a pretty big deal I got it very late but uh, I did enjoy it very much the fact that it was built by HTC and it was all titanium and well it sort of tickled my uh, my ego a bit it was a fairly rare device and it still is to this day of course here's the stylus uh, this stylus is actually an old plastic construction so I got my first HP uh, iPac 4700 back in 2012 but um, uh, of course being the hoarder the tech hoarder that I am I had a slew of them over the course of the few years and wouldn't you know it I still do own an additional one so yeah actually this is the original that I've used from 2011 or 12 to up to 2016 when I switched to Android I used to own a Blackberry and this was my alternative to a smartphone I don't know if you can see this but I, I've actually uh, sort of meshed in I've cut a piece of universal screen protector over the um, over the the original screen because these were these are soft screens so they they have a plastic uh, cover over them I don't know if you can see it it's not glass so when you play <laughs> when you play obsessively jawbreaker or solitaire you just tend to press the same side of the screen and you get to scratch it uh, it took me quite a while to understand this I believed I scratched about two or three devices until I figured out a way to protect them but I used to cut um, well uh, I used to botch up this so uh, work and cut out a piece of screen protector just put it on there and protect the 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 underside the the finished side of the screen if you will so you can see there are are a lot of micro scratches here and you could all also see that in fact you can even scratch it right now but there's no worries because this stylus only scratches the uh, added surface the screen protector if you will so yeah this one I got in 2012 and ever since I've been uh, gunning I've been hunting for one of these devices I also got one I believe in 2016 and but that was no good so I sold it for parts very cheaply and uh, I instantly regretted it and um, then I've hunted for one more and I got this one which is in actual in all actuality it's in better uh, aesthetic condition than my original one because this was used fairly hard you can see there are some scratches here I got it almost well pristine looking if you will but I used to uh, stack up a lot of time in it so I used to funny enough I, I I was able to install Age of Empires first edition the PC version actually ran on this pocket PC which was well sort of impressive if you think about it the the original game came in 1997 and by 2004 you could run it on a handheld pocket device quite nice so you obviously you had along with these devices your myriad of accessories this is a nice looking screen protector which um, has a special slot here you can insert it and it has a, a nice piece of magnet here which holds it in place I don't know why because titanium is not supposed to be magnet magnetic but anyway maybe there's a piece of a magnet here under the titanium bodywork 
uh, of course, the obligatory suite of charger, which is quite interesting. Have a look at this charger. It actually expels its uh, power socket head. So you can switch this over with, um, you know, a US type uh, socket with three um, three horns or what, whatever you call them. Sorry, I don't have the word in my mind right now. Uh, of course, you had the, the typical HP USB cable and you had the well, the, just the cable head which you could connect to get the charging ready. So you just, in order to save space, maybe you were on a trip or something on a plane and you could just connect this and charge up the, the device. I also own this quite nice uh, dongle or, I don't know, desk stand, what you want to call it. It actually fits quite snugly here and you can use the eye pack uh, without holding it in your hand so you could operate it like this i don't know if you could see this or not so yeah um well you get the idea and uh, two uh leather cases if you will one of them is a bit strange is that dad look from the 2000s the 1990s you could clip it to your uh, tall waist jeans or whatever I never used to uh, I never used this anyway but it's it's nice to have it around to remind me of what the iPad offered I'll show you right now the actual um, case that I used this leather case uh, it's a pouch style leather case it's quite nice I like the minimalist look and the sleek design. It's been warped up by the by heavy use. Uh, I used to uh, uh, I used to hold my my device in this uh, case uh, all the time. So yeah, that's why it has so many scratches and well, it's pretty worn and dirty, but it uh, it did the trick. So yeah, these are my eye packs. Let me just power them up, power one of them up so you can see what they actually do. So the same deal, the HP logo would pop up and you need to calibrate the screen and what have you. Give it a second. It's gonna boot up. This stylus doesn't seem to be quite the quality I was expecting. And there's another one. Let me try this one, see if this is better. Yeah, actually, this is the better one. I don't know, that one was a cheap Chinese knockoff, whatever. So this is my original eye pack. And yeah, as you can see, it requires you to calibrate the screen. Let's try the brightness level on battery on AC so yeah it's not that bright but it's still a crisp and f uh, okay resolution um, what I used to uh, what did I accomplish with this device as I've said before I installed the uh, Age of Empires 1 <laughs> on a pocket PC I managed to get it up to Windows 5 mobile so it was pretty modern by the Time by the standards Windows Mobile uh, after 2003 was actually used by uh, actual smartphones not only pocket PCs like this one so yeah let's see what memory we have so as you can see right here uh, with we actually got 62 megabytes of uh, RAM memory of ROM memory uh, which you could play around with storage or programs um, the storage card is being read right now um, I think I don't know so total storage memory yeah because I, I do have a 4 gigabyte storage SD card installed uh, I don't know why it doesn't show it So maybe I need to fiddle around with fiddle around with this 
thing a bit. Okay, nevertheless. Uh, it used to have an okay audio sound. Uh, you could tune it, adjust it quite nicely. Um, pretty, pretty okay gadget, pretty uh, potent gadget, if you will. Uh, by the time I got it, of course, it was at the end of its <laughs> life uh, in terms of uh, relevance on the tech in the tech world, but still quite nice. One interesting fact, you won't see this on, I don't believe on any other pocket PC, but at least on few of them. Uh, this, this, uh, this slew of buttons actually works as a D-pad, so I don't know if I could show you right now. If you go into settings, um, buttons, and you can actually set the mm, there's a menu here that allows you to use this D this slew of buttons look as a d-pad so you can actually use it as a mouse pad of sorts of course it was cumbersome unreliable and unrefined so you wouldn't get any as you can see I'm not being I'm not able to control it very much but in all fairness, I do, I did appreciate HP for trying to do things differently and offer new technologies for, uh, for this, um, in this market, if you will. So yeah, a couple of LEDs up here, the Bluetooth LED, the connection LED, let me just show you. It will, um, whenever you turn on some connectivity, uh, this will show here Let's turn it on and you will see yes, there it is the Bluetooth um, Fairly Standard you could connect actually a GPS antenna with this thing or you could connect it right here in the SD slot So yeah, pretty interesting device Not much else to say about these uh, <laughs> These two um, these two um, gadgets here uh, I used to love them I still do I know they're they're irrelevant at this point and actually I think uh, six or nine months pass before I start one of them up but I can't help but admire the the sleek design the metal housing the well all these details as I'm going to disconnect it now you'll see the battery will die out yes it will so yeah fun little uh, fun little gadgets from another period um, stick around as I still have a few eye packs to show you and a lot more stuff hope you enjoyed this video and you found it mildly entertaining for what it is thanks for watching